Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us for an opportunity to hear the grace of God. Make sure you like, comment, and share, and enjoy the message. And the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to him, and him is Elijah. Say Elijah. Elijah. Remember, we talked about Elijah last week. Say Elijah. Elijah. Saying, arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow. Say widow. A widow there to provide for you. Stay with me. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little bit of water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Did anybody grow up with a mama that asked him to do something and then in the midst of them going to do something, they asked him to do something else? Yeah, my mom makes it all the time. Can't go get me a bottle of water and then bring me the remote at the same time. And then go get me something, right? All right, okay, okay, all right. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Watch this. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for me and my son that we may eat it and die. She's saying, I ain't got enough for you, player. Like, I, I know you a man of God, but this for me and my son. Because once we eat this, we're going to die. I only got enough food so me and my son can have a last meal, and then we're just going to die. She was in preparation to die because she couldn't see it tomorrow. You know, that's why most people give up on life because they, they can't see it tomorrow. Watch me. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Everybody say that loud. Do not fear. Do not fear. No, well, uh -uh. no, 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 no. Because when you come up against some situations in your life, you're going to have to say that out loud. Say, do not fear. Do not fear. There you go. Go and do as you have said. <laughs> but make a small cake from it first. He's saying, yeah, I understand that you get ready to die. And I understand that, that you just have a little bit. But before you die, make me something first. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. And bring it to me and afterwards, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. They ate for many days. They ate for many days. I want to come from the title, How to Make Your Last Last. How to Make Your Last Last. Anybody ever felt like you are down to your last? Can, can, no, no, no. Can, can we be honest? Let, let, let me paint a picture. Have you ever been in your college dorm room where it's exam time and you spend all of your money, you have no clean clothes, and the only thing you, only thing you got is a half-eaten uh, container of oodles and noodles? Can, can, I, can I paint a greater picture? Have you ever paid your rent and then after you paid your rent, you didn't know where your next meal was coming from? So you just sitting in there and you trying to figure life out and you trying to figure out, God, how do I make my last last? Hmm. Can I get one amen in the building? Have you ever been in a position where, God, I paid my bills, now I need you to provide everything else? Or watch me, God, I don't know which bill to pay. <laughs> let, me, let me paint another picture. Have you ever decided, God, am I going to put gas in my car or am I going to get something to eat? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I'm preaching to somebody. Y'all can act bougie all you want to. But I know what it's like to choose between putting $10 in my tank or going to McDonald's. <laughs> hmm. Okay, okay. On the dollar menu. And then watch me not even the dollar menu, what, what a dollar menu, but, but here's the thing, when you only got $10, you got to pick and choose what you want to eat. I'm going to get a double cheeseburger today, and I'm going to get some fries tomorrow, and then I'm going to get a chicken sandwich the next day. And then I'm going to get a free cup of water for each one. Y'all ain't, 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 ain't with me, y'all ain't with me, y'all ain't with me, y'all ain't with me, y'all ain't, 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 ain't there, it's okay. How to make your last last, how to make your last last. Okay, I, I need y'all to rock with me on something. Um, there, there's a concept 
of a particular type of meal that I need you to help me describe. I asked my team this yesterday. Has anybody ever eaten a struggle meal? Anybody ever eaten a struggle meal? Can, 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 can you all give me an example of a struggle meal? What's a struggle meal, Bird? Can you give me an example? You don't have an example? You never ate a struggle meal? She rich. She got it like that. She got it like that. She Bel Air. <laughs> she Bel Air. We still in Compton. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Who in here is eating a struggle meal? Okay, Patrick, what's a, what's a struggle meal? Oodles and noodles. Go ahead. Oodles and noodles with a bag of chips. For some people, they ain't even had a chip. So that's just oodles and noodles. That's fine. That's fine. What's a, what's a struggle meal? Nah, I was going to say oodles and noodles, but I used to like, stuff like a little spice of cheese in there. Okay, okay. See, he getting gourmet. He getting gourmet. <laughs> what, what's a struggle meal? Somebody help me out. What, what's a struggle meal? I had um, a sugar sandwich. A sugar sandwich. My God. A sugar sandwich. Now, I'm going to ask. Go ahead, go ahead, Ebony. Say it again. Beanies and weenies. That's a, that's a kindergarten snack right there, boy. That junk come in handy when you're 21. Come on now. Come on now. I need, I need some help. Somebody said cereal and water. Woo. Cereal and water. Yee, my God. Woo. What, what, about, what about syrup sandwich? Syrup sandwich? That count? Syrup sandwich? Okay. Okay. Somebody said spam. Does that count? Spam? Huh? That count? Does that count? Okay. Okay, I got, I got one. Um, has anybody ever heard of like rice and eggs? Rice and eggs, that's, that's your last, that's your last rice and eggs. What, what's, what's another one? Somebody, somebody put in our group chat, they put chitlins. But, but here's the thing. No, 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 we're not going to do that. 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 You know, we're not going to do that. Because, because here's the thing. Chitlins is not a struggle meal because it only comes out around twice a year. And when it comes out twice a year, there's a process of what of when you got to clean them. And when you clean them, you eat them with delicacy. We're not going to do that. That's not struggle food. That's not struggle food. You might not like it, but it ain't struggle food. That's the difference. What's, what's, what's another struggle? Listen, somebody, somebody put in our group chat, they put sugar water. I ain't never had no sugar water. I ain't never. Y'all, y'all ever had sugar water? You had sugar water? I ain't never had no sugar You had sugar water? I ain't never had no sugar water. Somebody give me another. Is that it? A pack of hot dogs. Okay, spam. Um, but somebody else put in, the, put in our group chat, they put, um, they put chicken and rice in one pot. That's a struggle meal? That goes a little dollar, ain't it? <laughs> I believe what they're saying is the reason why chicken and rice in one pot is because it can stretch and it can last for a whole week. So, you said spaghetti? Spaghetti can last, but that ain't no struggle. I, I, now, I like some good spaghetti now. Now, don't do that. Don't do, I still eat some good spaghetti now. Don't do that. Spaghetti with no meat. Spaghetti. Oh, so, oh, 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 okay, okay. Spaghetti with no, with no meat. Good God Almighty. Just a sauce in the <laughs> That gets you through. I'm telling you right now. That gets you through. My God, today. Woo. My God. Ye. Can I, can I ask you a question, though? If we were to define, if we were to define a struggle meal, isn't a struggle meal usually a meal that's created from the last of your resources that's meant to hold you over till you, till you get to more resources. Okay, okay. So, so a struggle meal is the last of what you have until you get to plenty. Okay, okay. So you don't want to eat spam, but you got to eat it till you get to steak. Okay, okay. You, you, you don't want to eat hot dogs and bread. And a lo- you know, you know how people eat the hot dogs and, and just the loaves of bread, not the bun, just, just, just the bread. You, you don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that, but you got to do that until that check clear and you can go to Shake Shack. Right? Okay, okay. You don't want to eat cereal and water, but you got to do what you got to do till you can get some money to go to the grocery store. My question today is, I understand why we call them struggle meals, but how come we don't call them transition meals? 
Just, 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 maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. Maybe this, is how, this is how I am as a preacher. Be- because, because here's my thing. How can we call anything in our life our last when we are connected to a God who never lacks? How can we, how can we say that this is my last when we have been born into a God who operates in abundance? Maybe it's because we call where we are by what we have, which is only temporary, when we serve a God who is eternal. And my question today is, why are you claiming something to be your last when you serve a God who has put you first? Now, don't get me wrong. I, I understand I understand what it means to be down to your last 20. I, I know what it means to be down to your last 10. I know what it means to be down to your last five. But, but I think what happens is when we become afraid of our last, we become scared, we become paralyzed, we become immobile because we think that once we're through with the last, we won't have anything left. But we serve a God who will put you in a place and make everything right. So on today, I want to teach you how to make your last last, okay? Are you ready for this? The Bible says in 1 Kings 17, 8 through 9, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow to provide there. I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. Now, we're still talking about Elijah. Elijah is one of the baddest prophets in the Bible. When Elijah says something, Brockman, it happens. He called fire down from heaven, and it happened. When, 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 when it was time for him to kill over 400 false prophets, he killed them all by himself. By himself. When he prophesied, it will not rain, it did not rain. But, but here's the problem with being a prophet, with being a man of God, that whenever God tells you to go, you have to go. And when God tells you to stay, you have to stay. Which lets me know, I want you to write this down, the provision of God requires patience. The provision of God requires patience. And the the only reason why a lot of us are impatient is because we don't like being inconvenienced. We don't like being inconvenienced. We like to know where we're going, and when we know where we're going, we like to get there and go back to where we want to go. But watch me. But when God is leading you, listen to me, when God is leading you, and God's trying to lead you to provision, he's trying to lead you to where he wants to bless you, you have to be okay that when he tells you to stay in a place, you got to stay there. Because here's the problem. God's timing will always conflict your schedule if your life is not submitted. I'm going to say that one more time. God's timing will always conflict your life if your life is not submitted. Because God is not too slow, we're just in too much of a hurry. Because we live in a generation that if I want something to eat, I can go to my phone. We live in a generation that if I want a date, I can go to my phone. If I want to watch a movie, I can go to my phone. If I need some new shoes, if I need some new clothes, I can go to my phone. But what happens when God tells you, I'm trying to take you off the timing of your iPhone and put you on the timing of heaven. Because your iPhone has to be updated, but my resources never run out. So he tells Elijah, I want you to stay there. And then watch me. So the Bible says, so Elijah rose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow, say a widow. A widow was there gathering sticks, and when he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink, this woman was a widow. Widows in the Bible, when they lost their husband, they basically lost everything. They lost everything because they depended on their husband for everything. Their husband was the provider. This woman was out gathering sticks, which means the reason why she was gathering sticks, she was trying to cook something. So she's out gathering sticks. This is her husband's job. I'm not used to this. I'm speaking as a widow. I'm not used to doing this. I'm used to being at home and my husband take care of everything. I don't understand what I'm doing. I just, I'm just doing what I got to do. Is there anybody in the room that felt like they were on their last and there was still too much on their plate? Is there anybody in the room that's ever felt like I have too much responsibility? I can't handle this. God, I know what you told me to do, but this is a new season. I'm not used to this. I lost everything. I lost my husband and I'm just suggesting. Then a man of God comes to me and tells me to get some water. And here's the problem. In those days when somebody was on a journey and they asked you to get them some water, it was inhospitable not to get the water. Have you ever been in a place when God is calling you to serve, but you want to be selfish? 
Has, has, has anybody ever been in a place where you know God is calling you to be a blessing, but you feel burdened? This, this woman, I'm sure she feels burdened. And, and here's the problem. She, the Bible says, the Bible says that as she was going to get it, as she was going to get the water, watch me. He called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Hmm. Wait a minute. Now, listen, bro, you don't already ask me to go get you some water. Now, I'm only doing this because in my culture, I ain't trying to disrespect you. But 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 now but now you want something that belongs to me. Now, now, now you want something that I don't even know how to manage. What Elijah is doing here, he, he's asking for a piece of her last. Can I ask you a question? What happens if God was to ever tell you, I want you to give away your last? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I saw some faces turn. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. What if, watch me, what if, when, what, what, what if, you know, you've you, you done everything you're supposed to do, you paid your bills, and, and you got a $25 gift card to Food Line, and God says, I want you to give it to that lady over there? Hmm. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. What happens? What happens when you got a hundred dollar bill in your pocket and you like, boom, man, I'm straight. I'm gonna be good. But then God says, You see that homeless person over there? I want you to give it to him. I want you to sow a seed. I want, I want, I want you to do it. You see, you know, you know what's funny? It's easy for us to give when we got it. Uh oh. You know, it's when, when, when you, listen, when you got more. It's easy for you to give, but, but maybe, because this has happened to me, the Spirit of God has challenged me in the fact of what is your definition of more? Because it's easy to give when you can strategize how to manage your more. But what if God wants to be the manager of your more and he says, I want you to give away your definition of more so you can understand mine? Because let's be clear, you know, when we have our last, we get real stingy. Y'all ain't going to be honest today. You know, when you, when you got that last pack of oodles and noodles and somebody call you and say, hey, man, you got some oodles and noodles, you ain't, de- you ain't ne- never giving that pack away <laughs> because you don't know what you're going to do with it. But, 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 but here's the thing that I want you to understand. Be careful not to forget his abundance because you think, because you think God's provision is absent. Don't forget God's abundance just because you think His provision is absent. Just because it don't look like he's providing doesn't mean God's not making a way. What if the way is made on the other side of your obedience? Because here's what we have to understand is that whenever you give, that's a seed that never leaves your life. When you plant a seed, a seed never leaves your life. A seed never leaves you. But the problem is we love to harvest, but are we planting seeds? I think I said this before, that, that, that millionaires and billionaires, they love recession. They love it. Because it's a time to plant seeds. It's a time to put seeds in the ground. Now, don't get me wrong. The greatest seed is Jesus. But here's the problem. Thank you. Watch me. The blood and the mercy of God, that's one thing. You already got that blessing. But in the natural, there is a such thing as seed time and harvest. You put a seed in the ground, it's got to come up. But I think one of the reasons why we don't put seeds in the ground is because we are afraid that it's not going to come up when we need it. Because when you put a seed in the ground, a tomato, let's say you put a tomato tree, you put an apple tree, that's not coming up on your timing. That's coming up on the timing of when it's supposed to bloom. You see, when God gives you an opportunity to sow, just sow and watch God make the way instead of you trying to be strategic in making the way. But you see, I understand the pressure of this woman because this woman is saying, I'm a widow. My man is going. All I have is me and my son. And, 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 and you want some bread? <laughs> you, want, you want my bread. But, 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 but watch me. Watch me. The Bible says in verse 12, watch this. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and only a little jar of oil. Watch me. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Re- remember, she's a widow. She's not used to all of this planning because her husband was the provider. Her husband was the planner. Ha- ha- has anybody in the room ever felt the pressure of being a planner? Yes. Y- you know, you know, 
You know, we live in a generation that we have a hard time with adjusting to adulting. Because, because most people in this generation, it's almost as if being an adult was tossed in our lap. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. Listen, listen. There are certain things you just have to do with being an adult, but there are a lot of young people who feel as if they were not prepared for adulthood. But what happens when now you got to grow up? Now you got to learn how to budget. Now you have to learn how to plan. Now you have to learn how to set aside money. And, and let's just be real. Everybody in our generation, a lot of us, we're just not good at money. How many people have ever read the book, The Psychology of Money? If you've never read that book, you need to read that book. Because it is one of the best books on talking about the empathy of this generation and money. Because a lot of this stuff is new. A lot of this stuff is new that we're dealing with. Credit cards, that's a new system. Debit cards, that's a new system. I know like we, we, because we live in a generation where everybody uses it, that's new. 401k, that's new. All this stuff is new, and now we're adjusting to it. And this woman is feeling the pressure of having to adjust. And the Bible says that all she has is a little bit of flour and some oil. This, this, this is all she got. Listen, it's, it's not about her being selfish. This is all she has. But, but here's the problem. The problem is not her last. The problem is the limitation of her lens. I'm going to say that again. The problem is not her last. The problem is the limitation of her lens. Because what happened was, it wasn't the fact that she's saying, this is all I have. What she's really saying is, this is all who I am. It, it, you ain't relating to it, so, so I'm going I'm to I'm I'm do it like this. This, this. this is what we do. If this ain't full of thousands of dollars, we don't know how to praise God. Oh, okay, okay. If my account's in the negative, so is my attitude. If my account's in the negative, I don't know how to worship. If I, if I don't have the money I want, then I don't know how to come to church. If I don't have the money I want, then I don't want to hang out with anybody. Listen, that's why everybody happy around tax time, because this is full. When tax time come around, everybody happy. Everybody got money. Everybody got rims. Everybody got sneakers. Everybody got clothes. But until then, what you have done is you have reduced your ability to do what God is calling you to do based on plastic. Listen to me. What we tend to do is we tend to limit God based on the method that is easiest to comprehend by our own mind. So if my account is in the negative, so is my heart. But the problem is you limit God to what he can do in your life. The Bible says that God, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. I don't know about you, but I've seen him put groceries on my doorstep. I've seen him put cards in my envelopes. I've seen him put money on my doorstep. Stop limiting God to a card and remember that you're in Christ. If you think, if you think this is the only way God can bless you, then you have just put God in the box. If you think the only way God can bless you is cash app, we serve a God who owns the hill and the cattle that's on the hill. He can send a random stranger up to you and put money in your hand. He can send a random stranger up to you and put gas in your tank. He can send a random stranger up to you and put groceries on your doorstep. I'm trying to tell you, stop limiting God to how he wants to bless you and just receive the blessing. Be be because, because here's the problem. Watch me. Here here's the problem. Because if you think, if you think that all you see is what you have, then all you have is what you'll see. If you think that what you see is all you have, then what you have is all you'll see. Let me, let me, let me, let me bring it back. If this is all you see, this is all you have. If when you look in your bank account and you think that what's in your account it's attached to your identity, then that's all you are. Let me help you. Let me help you. Watch me. Watch me. If Friday on payday is when you get the most excited, that's an identity problem. Oh, I'm messing, <laughs> I'm messing with people right now. Because it's a problem when you are mad all week long, but then, uh-oh, Friday coming. 
Listen, don't get me wrong. I, listen, listen, listen. I like a good payday myself. I like a good payday myself. But, but my question is, Shababokoso, if you can't have the same, if you can't have the same joy on Monday as if you do on Friday, that's a problem. Because your joy should not be dictated by what hits your account. Because your bank account ain't the account that you should be thanking God for. My sin is forgiven. My debt has been paid. I bless beyond measure. I am righteous because of Jesus. You need to be thankful for the blood instead of, being, instead of just being thankful for your bank account. You see, that's why the Bible says you got to walk by faith and not by sight. Because come here, Darius. Come here right quick. I'm going to use you for an example. Because here's the problem. You see, you will always feel small when you compare yourself to something big. But my question to you today is, when you compare yourself to something big, when you compare yourself, what are you standing on? Okay, it's not making sense. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You see, you see, let's say a Darius is the problem. A Darius is taller than me. So if I keep comparing myself to a Darius, then I'm always going to see a Darius as something that's bigger than me. But watch me, listen to me, but when I put myself against a Darius, I'm taller than a Darius. The problem is, I keep comparing myself and my own strength. In your own ability, you keep comparing your own strength against a problem God never called you to solve. So when, so when I put myself on the word of God, I'm higher than my problem. My question to you today is, what are you standing on? Are you standing on his word? Are you standing on his promises? Because if you keep standing on your own ability, the problem will always be bigger. But when you stand on the word of God, you'll see above it. And the problem is, thank you. And the problem is, the reason why so many of us are sinking is because you keep standing in your own ability. But watch this though. This, this woman, this woman, she's, she's standing on her own ability. And the Bible says this in 1 Kings 13 through 14. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Say, do not fear. fear. You know, it's a fearful thing to feel as if you're not going to make it. Come on, let's let's, let's be honest. You know, we laugh about struggle meals. We laugh about struggle meals. But there's a fear that comes in your life when you don't think you're going to have enough to last to tomorrow. You know, you know, we, we laugh about it. We put it on memes. But that's the fear. If I don't know how I'm going to make it to next week. But, but here's the thing. Fear is just false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Fear, fears, fear feels real, but it's not real. Fear is just an illusion. Because what happens is you get so caught up in where you are that you forgot what, what God said about where you're going. God said that I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I have already supplied every one of your needs. But it's hard to see that when all you got is rice and eggs. And your account is in negative 15. I'm, listen, I'm teaching, I'm teaching you by life. When you, got a ba- when, you, when you got a baby and a wife, and you just paid everything you were supposed to pay, and now you don't know what's going to happen next. But Elijah said, do not fear. Watch me. Go and do as you have said, but make a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterwards, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up. Watch this, y'all. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. What does that mean, Pastor Canaan? Because remember, remember, Elijah, he prophesied that it was going to rain. He prophesied that. So not only did he prophesy the rain, he says that when you make this cake for me, as soon as it starts raining, you're going to see the supply happen. I'm trying to tell you that you don't have to worry about if it's dry in other people's life because it can rain in your life. Stay with me. Stay with me now. Stay with me. But, 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 but here's something that I need for us to understand. I remember one time, Ashley, when I went to South Africa, I went to South Africa, Johannesburg. Listen to me. Every African-American needs to go to Africa once. Every African-American in America, listen, every single one of you, you need to go to Africa once. You just need to go. You just need to go. It's a long flight, but you need to go. Dave, it's a totally different type of poverty. 
totally different. Beautiful city, Johannesburg, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. But poverty, it's another level of poverty. Bert, um, we, were, we were in this village and like what they call ghettos, it's like, it's made out of like clay. Like the homes are made out of clay and it's like dirt and it's like dirt rooms, right? And, and this woman, she invited us into her home, Drew. I think I told you this story. She invited us into her own, her home, Sierra. And when we walked into our home, she pulled out her pots and pans. She pulled out her pots and pans. This story blesses me every time. When she invited us into her home, Ivan, she said, I don't want your money. I don't want nothing from you. She said, just lay your hands on my pots. <laughs> she said, just lay your hands on my pots. She said, I don't want your dollars. She said, I don't want your money. She said, I don't want nothing from you. She said, just lay your hands on my pots. Just pray for my pots. Just pray for my pants. And when you pray for my pants, I know God will make a way. Lord, I ain't never seen no type of faith like that in America. She said, just lay your hands on my pots. Just lay your hands on my pants. But here's the problem. Why didn't Elijah do that? You can call fire down from heaven, but you can't multiply some flour for me. You, you can kill 400 prophets, but you can't make some oil grow. You can't make some oil stretch. I'm dialoguing with the text, and I'm wondering, bird, why didn't Elijah make the flower stretch? Why didn't he make the being full? Why didn't he make the jar spill over? You a man of God, you can do it. But maybe, bird, maybe, maybe the miracle wasn't, maybe the miracle wasn't in multiplying her last. Maybe the miracle was her unattaching her priorities to her last. Maybe the reason why there was no need to multiply the flower was because her priority was making her last her first. Maybe she made her last her first option. And maybe God is saying, I don't want your last to be your first option. I want to be your first option. You might not have food in the pantry, but I want you to come to me first. You might not have food in the refrigerator, but I want you to run to me first because I can multiply your pantry. I can multiply your refrigerator. I can multiply what you have. But my question is, where are your priorities? This woman, she said, I'm going to use the little bit that I have and I'm going to eat it and I'm going to die. She made a premature decision before talking to the Lord. She said, you know what? This is all I got. So I'm going to just eat this and I'm going to die. When Elijah is saying, not yet. Sow a seed and watch what happens. She sowed the seed and watch me. The Bible says this in verse 15 through 16. So she went away and did according to the word of the Lord, the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry. According to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. My last point. I want you to think about something. What if your last is just a seed to get you to something that will last longer? Let me ask you a question. When you're down to your last, when you're down to your last, how do you view it? When you're down to your last, when you're down to your last, how do you view your last? If all you got is fruity pebbles and a little bit of milk, how do you view it? If all you got is a pack of hot dogs, no bread, how do you view it? How do you view it? Do you view it, do you view it as something that is attached to your identity? Or do you see it as an opportunity to see God do something you've never seen before? Because I want you the next time, in Jesus' name, it won't come to this point. But if you ever have to approach a point in your life where you come against your last, I want you to not attach the last to your life. I just want you to see the last for what it is. This might be all I have now, but I have a God who serves more. This might be all I got right now, but I can just believe God and I can watch him make a way. The problem is, here it is. We don't like dealing with pain. Nobody wants to deal with the pain of waiting. 
Because what do you do when all you have is a pack of hot dogs? This is all I got. God, I thank you that in the name of Jesus, you will supply my need of bringing more food in the refrigerator. And after you pray, what do you do? You wait. You wait. But you see how all y'all just looking at me? You see how, like, just wait? Yeah, just wait. Because what else are you going to do? Because once you release it to God, what most of us do is we begin to worry. We begin to get frustrated. We begin to get aggravated. God, you ain't coming through fast enough. You just prayed five minutes ago. God, you ain't making this happen quick enough. Listen to me. If you don't learn how to wait, you will become distracted by worry. Worry is just a distraction. It's a distraction. Because worry will tell you that God is not who he is. You see, the only thing this woman did, she trusts God's word. Either you're going to trust God's word or you're going to worry. Watch this. If you want to know how to make your last last, remember to put God first. What does that mean, Pastor Canaan? That means that, means that instead of worrying about the problem, put God in front of the problem. Stop telling God about your mountain and tell your mountain about your God. I'm not preaching to you something that I've never been through. I've been there where I paid rent and didn't know what was going to happen next. And I wasn't going to call my friends because that's not what God told me. But then God always put money in my account. I look at my account. It was in a negative one morning. And then by the end of the day, it was $300 in there. I didn't ask for nobody for a dime. It just came in there because I know that my God will supply all of my needs. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. And let me be clear, God didn't do that for me because my behavior was always right. Because I'm a pastor. Because I was always doing the right thing. Let me tell you something. If God blessed you because of you, you wouldn't be blessed. Oh, I know we don't like that. I know we don't like that. Because for some reason in our minds, we think, for some reason we think we're holier than what we are. You think God made a way because of you? Oh, come on now. You ain't that anointed. You ain't that holy. What about those thoughts you think? Hmm. We, we serve a God who knows all and sees all. You honestly think, you honestly think that God is blessing you because of you. God does not bless you because of you. He blesses you in spite of you. Why? Because of Jesus. Listen to me. You see, under the old covenant, the oil was getting ready to run out. But under this new covenant, my oil never runs out. My supply never ends because I might have demands on the earth, but Jesus is my supply. And watch me. Because Jesus is my supply, then I will have no problem giving my last because if I'm serving a God that never lacks, my last don't exist. Uh-oh. So let's challenge the notion, this is my last $20. Is it really? When I serve a God who has abundance, is this my last 20? What if we all had the perspective? Let's stand up. What if we all had the perspective? What if we all had the perspective? You know what? You know what? I might only have $20 in my wallet, but my father knows how to take care of me. They just sang a song saying, if he watches over the sparrows, how much more does he watch over you? When have you ever seen a bird worry? I'll wait. When have you ever seen a bird worry? Think about it. I ain't never seen a pigeon worry about nothing else but pooping. I know Prince said doves cry, but I ain't never seen one. You ever seen one? Because if he can watch over the sparrow, you don't think he watches over you? This is the problem. 
We have to understand how much God loves us. He loves you too much to have you go without. Yes, you might have went without. For, uh, you might go without for an hour, but keep believing. Two hours, keep believing. If God is who he said he is, the Bible says he's not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he's got to do it. If he promised it, he's got to bring it to pass. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. I've had to work a job for six, six, for, for, for six days a week, 12 hours a day, pastor this church. God told me, I want you to go back to this job, and when I tell you to leave, I'll make a way. You don't think there were days I wanted to quit? You don't think there were days I wanted to give up? You don't think there were days that I actually thought about, Ellie, you know what? It's killing me pastoring this church and working this job. So you know what? I'm going to just, I'm gonna just have to just quit the ministry. And the Spirit of God says, you don't quit until I tell you to quit. But then watch me. It might have been four years, but it was four years that was worth it. Because now I'm walking in the thing that I prayed for. It just takes time. It takes time. It takes time. It takes time. But when I thought that it was my last day, when I thought it was my last hour, when I thought it was my last breath, when I thought it was my last, he made my last last longer because I always put him first. God, I don't feel like it today, but I'm getting up out the bed. I don't feel like going to work today, but I'm getting up out the bed. I don't feel like paying this bill, but I'm a pay it. And also, too, it's a matter of priorities. It's priorities. I know, I know, listen, I get it, I get it. When it comes to giving, I know, I know. But listen to me, y'all. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. David says something in Psalms. I love it. He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I want you to think about your life. Just, just think about it right now. Just, just think about your life right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Just think about your life. Think about where you are. I want you to look at yourself. When is the last time you thank God for the little things? You got clothes on your back. You got breath in your body. When you woke up this morning, I'm pretty sure you were able to look in the mirror. You had gas to get over here. If the same God that got gas in your car to get over here, he's got gas to get you home. When is the last time you actually just thank God for the small stuff? God, I thank you for breath in my body. I thank you for blood in my veins. Another way to make your last last is praising him until you get more. What does praising God look like? Because we always make it look like you. No, that, that, ain't, that ain't praise. You know what praise is? I like that outfit. That's praise. Man, I like them Yeezys. That's praise. Man, you know, I got that same shirt at home. You got that shirt from H&M. Hey, you killing that shirt, bro. You killing it. Because them fours, I ain't got them fours. But you killing that shirt. That's praise. I like how you did them red strings and them ones and how you matched it with that shirt, with, 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 with everything. That's, that's praise. I open my mouth and I declare how good you are to me. That's praise. That's praise. I declare it. I bless the Lord at all times and I keep a praise in my mouth. When I want to cuss, I praise. When I'm pissed off, I praise. When I get mad, I praise. That's what you do. You praise him because he's your provider. Hey That's guys, great. thank you for tuning in to our newest video. If you feel led to be a blessing to our ministry, feel free to give on Cash App at dollar sign Ready Church CLT or online at our website at IamReady.church slash give.